Welcome back. This is a fresh chapter in the center versus judiciary battle, and this happened today. Union Minister of Law and Justice, Arjumran Wegbal, introduced the Chief Election Commissioner Appointment Bill 2023 in the Rajya Sabha. Now, as per the bill, the committee that advises the president on the appointment of the Chief Election Commissioner and other election commissioners to others will comprise of three people. The Prime Minister, who leads the panel, the leader of the opposition in the House, and a cabinet minister nominated by the Prime Minister, which means the Chief Justice of India has been dropped from this selection panel. Now, to ensure that the senior most bureaucrat gets the job, the bill dictates that the Chief Election Commissioner and Election Commissioners will be appointed amongst candidates who are holding or have held a post equivalent to the rank of secretary in the past. What is making the bill's introduction very interesting is its timing. It is coming just a month before the 2024 election and is just six months before the election commissioner, Anoop Chandra Pandey, retires, leaving his position vacant. There are some sound bites coming in. Let's quickly listen in. With your permission, I move for leave to introduce a bill to regulate the appointments, conditions of service and term of office of the Chief Election Commissioner and other election commissioners, the procedure for transaction of business by the Election Commission and for matters connected herewith or incidental thereto. Thank you. Now, this bill is a deviation from the Supreme Court's judgment, which was passed in March this year, which placed the Chief Justice of India on the selection panel. The five-judge bench of the Supreme Court had said that the committee for choosing an election commissioner would comprise of the Prime Minister, the Leader of the Opposition, and the Chief Justice of India to make sure that the process is completely unbiased. Why? Well, because the bench observed that it was concerned about the devastating effects of leaving the election commissioner's appointment in the sole hands of the executive or the prime minister. But the apex court also made it clear that this would just be a stopgap arrangement until a law was passed in parliament taking away the exclusive powers of the executive to make the appointment of the chief election commissioner and the two other election commissioners. As expected, MPs from the opposition camp has criticized the bill and termed it a moment that weakens democracy. Listen in. Here in this very devious bill, what they've done is they've sought to replace the Chief Justice with a cabinet member yes. chosen from the Union Cabinet. The second part of it, and I'm going to read out the other devious part, they've not only replaced the Chief Justice, Clause 7.2 says the appointment of chief election commissioners and other election commissioners shall not be invalid merely by reason of any vacancy in or defect in the constitution of the select committee which means that if the select committee does not have the leader of the opposition the prime minister and the union cabinet minister still go, still go ahead despite there being a vacancy yes. if there is a defect the appointment cannot be overruled. So what's the point of a selection committee when you say that any defect in the selection committee or any vacancy will not stop the appointment of the chief election commissioner? I haven't had a chance to look at the bill, but certainly it does seem to be rather unusual. Uh, we will have to see in what form we take it up and whether we object, because the fact is that the chief justice, his participation in the exercise is part of what guarantees the independence uh, of the selection process. Let me go straight across to former Chief Election Commissioner S.Y. Qureshi. Good evening, Mr. Qureshi. Good to have you, have you here on Mirror now on a subject that I'm fairly certain is close to your heart. Uh, is it fair to say, this is what the opposition is arguing, but is it fair to say that with this bill, a constitutional body like the Election Commission is being surrendered to the political party in power? Actually, the, interestingly, this is a mixed bag. Uh, and I'll tell you why. There are some uh, positive things and there are some very negative things, no doubt. First of all, uh, the Supreme Court judgment is being complied with and a collegium is being set up. There was no collegium for the last 70 years. Uh, but Chief Justice has been included and uh, it has been replaced by a minister, which, of course, uh, will make uh, it certain that uh, the two people from the government will uh, uh, outvote the leader of opposition every time. 
So on the other side, chief justice has been on various collegium. What has been the quality of the selection? The, the director of CBI. Uh, we there is a direct. There was a director of CBI against whom I P reported that uh, one criminal went to his house 183 times. He was selected by this collegium where chief justice was present. And secondly, if chief justice is a party to the the selection, suppose the, that selection is ch challenged in the Supreme Court, there will be a conflict of interest. Here he is uh, select, there he sits in judgment. So, or even if he recuses himself, his uh, other colleagues will have to sit in judgment and it will be awkward. So, now, therefore, the although this two to one is a, is a, 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 a dubious kind of an idea, but there is a safeguard uh, which has to be introduced. One, that the ju judgment of this uh, selection committee must be unanimous. Uh, now, the, does it give uh, mm. veto power to the LOP? No. Because another innovation which is being done, the mm. shortlisting committee headed by cabinet secretary with the two secretaries, that five secretary rank officers will be presented. Surely there will be five quality the secretary rank officers on which both the PM and the LOP will agree. And surely the cabinet secretary will not spring a surprise on the PM by including in that shortlist an undesirable person. So all five will be the, should be equally acceptable to the government. And, uh, and then leader of opposition. So it, uh, it shouldn't uh, make it compulsory that the decision has to be unanimous. If it is majority, then it is useless. I remember reading uh, the Mr. Chaudhary some, some time that he attended many meetings and how he was treated. No information was given. If that is to continue, then of course it's useless. And But there are two, three other positive things uh, which have been hmm. introduced. One, the quality qualifications have been prescribed. Uh, for the last 70 years, there was no qualification. It's a great thing and it's a miracle that only civil servants were appointed with experience. They had a lifelong experience. And anybody from the market, from the street could have been uh, made, made the CEC. Um, uh, but now it has to be secretary rank officer, which is a very good thing. So, and third, very important thing which has happened, which has been uh, missed in the debate, that's something we have been demanding for 20 years that uh, for independence of the election, all three uh, commissioners should feel independent. Now, chief election commissioner was protected from the removal except through impeachment by the constitution itself. The other two used to feel they are on probation. And on the government uh, pressure, they can out uh, overrule the, the CEC. They used to feel on probation. They are being protected now. That's a damn good thing. But finally, one, one weakness, the status of election commission is, is being downgraded from a cabinet and a, from Supreme Court rank. The sub judge uh, of the Supreme Court it is now have been reduced to cabinet secretary. Now that is wrong. All the uh, salary of okay. cabinet secretary and the judge is the same, but in warrant of precedent, in uh, stature uh, and uh, uh, symbolically, so that the downgrading okay. will go against the image of the election commission. Okay. Okay. So you're telling me essentially that it is a mixed bag. Uh, there are reasons uh, for the opposition to view it with susp uh, suspicion, but there are some positives as well. But you also spoke about conflict of interest. Can I just press you on that point and ask you, uh, is there not conflict of interest built into the bill if you have the prime minister in the three member committee, you have the prime minister, a cabinet minister and a leader of opposition? It yes. essentially <laughs> means that the prime yes. minister and the government picks up the picks the election commissioner and the two election commissioners, which means there uh, is co a conflict of interest inbuilt into this bill. Then, absolutely, absolutely, and the safeguard is what I'm suggesting. Let this be unanimous, and if leader of opposition agrees, nothing like this. And surely, in the uh, uh, hundred but so far there is no people, safeguard. There will be five. But so far, which, Mr. Qureshi, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong. Mr. Qureshi, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, but so far there is no safeguard. You're suggesting these safeguards, but there are yes, no safeguards yes. in the bill so far. No, no, exactly. I'm suggesting it. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I think that was an important clarification. We'll leave it there, Mr. Qureshi. Thank you very much. Uh, we required someone like you, someone who has experience with the election commission uh, to help us understand what exactly this bill means. We'll leave it there, Mr. S.Y. Qureshi, thank you very much for joining us.